Hey, what's up, everybody? How you doing today? Brian Maples back with another video. I know it's been a while, um, but I really want to get back into Amazon now. So, uh, you know, what I'm trying to do now is just getting more into the private label again, just kind of going back to my roots, uh, just, you know, what I've always kind of loved to do. Um, so today I'm going to do some product research and kind of show you how I found the product. And we're going to kind of evaluate a product. I'm going to show you how I evaluate that product and show you how it's, it's changed over the years. Uh, where you know you used to do uh, product research a certain way and that way became very saturated as everybody knows so now everybody kinda has their own little way of doing it um, there's no right way to do product research right there's no right or wrong way but there are some things I think you need to look for when it comes to numbers uh, when it comes to a product and then when it comes to how you approach it in order to make it successful so I really feel like my years in Amazon have really helped me to kinda own my skills um, so I really kind of know what a good product is and uh, what to look for and what I'm, why I'm looking for it. So I'm going to kind of take you through my uh, process of what I'm looking for in a product and how it's changed quite a bit from, from, the, from the previous times. Um, I currently do have a very successful product. Now, I did not pick that product. Uh, that product, however, I did develop the product. Um, what I mean by that is, just to go over this very quickly, I have a previous company that I sold. Um, that was in the sports related industry uh, for on Amazon um, you know got a nice chunk of change for it sold that so I can't compete in the sports industry anymore so none of the products that I'm doing now are in the sports and outdoors I, I, I'm not allowed to compete in that particular um, arena anymore at least for a few years because I have no I compete but now I'm in a new section it's in office products I got my product idea from Products Savants they've been very good I highly recommend them um, however, I do want to mention that, you know, they source it for you and everything, which is really nice. I, I, I really appreciated that. I was not happy with the source that they gave me. I did find one of my own. Um, I was able to get much cheaper at good quality, um, and I was able to find my own supplier. In addition, there wasn't a lot of detail um, with the product that they gave me. They gave me an idea of, you know, size and in general how to do it, but they did not give me specifics I kinda did that on my own and I had a specific person that kinda designed uh, a unique a unique product and I think because of that reason it sells well and um, so yeah let me put it this way it's not just the idea it's what you put behind it and it's how you, how well you know your customer um, but I'm gonna try to kinda show you some of the numbers I'm looking for um, how I'm kind of qualifying products and then you can kind of decide well is this product going to be something that I can understand well enough and we'll get into the details there on how I can make it better for somebody like do I like for example when I did the sports stuff I trained people uh, or I helped rehab people because I worked in the rehab industry uh, as a PT assistant and I was able to use that knowledge and the people's knowledge around me to develop a, a kit that was good for training people right so that's kind of what I'm talking about. You want to understand your customer, but you can do it reverse too. It doesn't have to be find a customer base and then develop a product around it. That's a great way to do things. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, there's a great book by Ryan, Ryan Moran, who it's, uh, it's like 12 months to a million, I believe it's called. A great book, spectacular. I highly recommend you read it. You know, it's about developing a product around a group, right? So if you have a group of um, athletes, uh, let's say a specific sport like soccer, let's say, then you want to develop a product around soccer players. Maybe you've come up with something that can help them train better or help them develop a certain skill. So that's kind of developing a product around that group. And that's, I definitely recommend that, no doubt about it. However, you know, if you're just doing product research, you can look for a product first, find the product, and then decide based off of certain things whether or not it's a good product and that's kind of what I'm going to take you. I'm going to kind of do it in reverse. And then you can decide, well, do I understand the market well enough? Or can I look at some YouTube videos? Can I meet some people or talk to some people that might do this? Uh, you know, and then understand them better so I can understand what they want in a product. And then I can develop a, a product based off of the knowledge I've gained. So you can do it in reverse. There's no right or wrong way. That's, that's my point. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and jump in. Um, let me just show, show, quickly show you my criteria. I was just looking at arts and crafts. The reason most people look in that uh, because there's not a lot of um, there's a lot of different ideas 
but at the same time there's not a lot of gated issues there uh, if you don't know what I mean I mean you know you're not blocked from selling in that category for the most part um, you can typically sell in arts and crafts so it's pretty open to everybody right um, I, I went just some very simple criteria here I just did pricing 21.99 or higher um, I feel like you want to be at least around 22 I didn't want to miss a product if it was product you know price of 21.99 but around 22 or higher at least and that's going to be the lowest um, max sales I want at least 10 sales a day uh, and then revenue at least 5,000 preferably more like 10 or 20 uh, I'm not too much worried about the reviews anymore and I'll kind of tell you why I am when I look at the product but not to do the search because I really figure it can mess up your search so I would probably leave that blank um, and you can kind of fill in what you want to fill in but I don't worry too much about the weight the number of sellers the listing quality uh, rank I kind of like you know if it's below 15,000 that's my ideal if I can get a product there if I can find an example of that but so let's go ahead and, and so this is a pretty general criteria there's nothing too detailed about that and you don't have to follow anybody's rules on the search but these are just kind of my general little numbers I put in um, so I was looking through the product so in this category we have 4,000 products it's quite a bit um, the first thing I noticed on page two so just taking you through my mind, like searching here, I just found something on page two and I've already kind of done the research and if you can read up here you'll see what I found but so I was looking through here um, you know you want to look for something maybe a little unusual um, but you know click on even like candle jars, glass jar, that sounds something but it's glass so you gotta be careful there uh, you don't necessarily want to do glass unless you pack it really well um, and these are probably, you know, St. Patrick's Day. I'm thinking emerald green glass jars, right? That's probably St. Patrick's Day related. We're, we're right in the middle of the month. So you got to kind of like consider if it's seasonal, that type of thing. But let's just look through here and see, you know, can we find something interesting, right? I see a lot of cotton stuff, uh, a lot of craft stuff, and that's that's fine. You're going to find stuff sold in bulk. Um, even like this, one inch. What the heck? I'm just curious. I'm going to click on this. I didn't see this. Um, one inch wooden round ball bag of a hundred I mean look look at that like they've probably sold so many of these things it's insane there's wow they're selling 50 some a day 40 some a day but you know that's pretty simple like they're selling that for 19 bucks it's probably very very cheap for what there's you know what they're doing but even something that's silly like that you could you know make a, a good chunk of change off that um, but anyway that's not what I chose I'll just keep rolling on here. Clearly, they sell a lot of different sizes, as you can see. Um, so, I went all the way to page two. And what I really like to look for are things you can like kind of build a kit out of. I, I kind of like enjoy those type of products, but it doesn't have to be. Um, something that can kind of make unique. It's hard to make a wooden ball unique. I mean, you can do different sizes and stuff. If you're the first one there, one of the first ones there, nothing wrong with that. Um, but I started seeing this wire and kind of led me down a path of, of search and I, I saw like all right let me check this out like what's what are people doing with this wire is this like a wire that people use for electrical it doesn't look like it because we're in arts and crafts right so it has to be some kind of like craft wiring i'm thinking so i clicked on the craft wire and what came up for me was some of the, like one of these kits right where they were using the wire to kind of make jewelry out of it so then I decided to type in a couple different phrases like ring making kit and jewelry wire kit, right? But I noticed that people were putting jewelry in there. So I, at first I was typing in wire kit, then I was typing in jewelry kit. It just sounds interesting. And, you know, I know jewelry kits are saturated. I've looked at those before. Just the phrase, right? It's going to be ultra saturated. So like this guy, like jewelry making supplies kit. Like that's like his main words, jewelry, right? You can see he's selling a ton, but he has 8,800 reviews. Is that somebody you want to try to compete with? Probably not. But when you look through here, okay, this guy's got 963 reviews. It's a lot, too. He's selling 13 a day. That's not too bad. But then you see this guy, and this guy's sponsored, right? And he's selling 23 a day with only 138 reviews. So, and if you notice, too, he has the ring. Uh, this is the size rings, as far as I can tell. So it's essentially the same type of kit, but he has this ring sizer. You gotta ask yourself, like, what is this guy doing to make these sales, right? Um, what I mean is, like, if you looked at this term, if you looked at jewelry wire kit, 
think to yourself, it's pretty saturated. I mean, Joy Wire Kit, yeah, like, it's got to be saturated. Look at all these high reviews, 806, 415. He's not even making a bunch of sales. He's only making three some sales a day. But if you kind of look through it all, it doesn't truly matter. If you can find somebody who has low reviews, who's making a lot of sales, the question becomes like this guy. I mean, man, he's making 31 sales. And like, how, where is, how is he making his sales? How do we find that out? So we've got to ask ourselves, how are these guys that don't have a ton of reviews making so many sales? Like, their quality sucks, obviously. 27, four stars. They're getting murdered. Um, you got to have a good product. So anyway, let's jump up to this one. So I noticed this one is 138 reviews. Not that many reviews. Really low for today's standards. It's making 23 sales a day. And I say to myself, you know, 15,000 revenue. How in the world is he doing it? Um, I want to know what terms is he selling under that's making him this kind of money. So first thing I want to do, and the first thing I look at, now this might not be the right term, so you can't just get stuck on a term. It doesn't really matter. I mean, there's probably other terms that make sense. So I check out X-Ray. So if you don't have X-Ray, it's Helium's you know, lookup tool. I check that out. I want to see if there's other terms that they might recommend, related keywords right there, that I might be able to look up that maybe I can figure out how to get into the sales, right? So... There's really not any search volume for the, for jewelry wire kit. There's 19, meaning it's almost non-existent. So clearly, this isn't the main term. The question is, you kind of need to find what are the terms. There isn't necessarily a main term for everything. Now, if you have a glass bottle, there's probably glass bottles probably the main term. But my point is, when you have something like this. It could be jewelry for the main term. It could be wire for the main term. It could be ring for the main term. We just don't know what the main term is. And there's not necessarily a main term. And what I mean by that is for some of these things that have multiple things that they're related to, jewelry and wire and crafting and, and ring making, you know, you can find keywords maybe that have four or five terms where you can find a few thousand search volume that there's not a lot of competition and make your sales there. So when I see a guy under here, and clearly not the main term, jewelry wire kit is clearly not a thing, but when I see a guy made with 138 reviews making 23 sales a day, I ask myself, how is he doing it? So what's the best step to do next? Clearly we checked out x-ray, that's not the main term. We saw that it was only 19. We saw that there wasn't really too many related words. So I want to find out what he's selling under. Cerebro, if you don't know about Cerebro for Helium, it's going to pull up some amazing terms for you that shows you where he's ranking and where he's making his sales. And that's how we figure out how this guy with 138 reviews is making his sales and try to find out what the main keywords are he's using to make those sales. So I took his ASIN right here, copied it, or you can copy it here. If For those that don't know, you can, you can click on it and you can take it right from here. That's where the ASIN is, okay? But you can also go down the page and it's down there as well. So anyway, when, and I put his ASIN in here, okay? Let's make sure it's the same one. Uh, yes, it is. Okay, so here we go. We have all the things that he's ranking for. Here's your search volume. Here's your search volume trend, okay? Are they going up or down? Clearly, a lot of his terms are going down. I think as the summer rolls around, they'll probably go up again. Usually, that's how it works for a lot of arts and crafts. You know, kids are home from school. They have more time. They're doing more arts and crafts. So this might be somewhat seasonal in that respect, but he's making good sales right now. There's no reason to think that's going to drop. If, and if anything, I'm thinking it would go up. Um, so I look through here, and what I kind of like to do is I want to find out what terms. Now I usually just look through. You know, I see this isn't bad. 1500. He's ranked number two organically, number four sponsored. Right? That's pretty good. Um, not not a ton of search volume, but not bad. 2500. He's ranked number two organically and number one sponsored. So there you go. He's probably making a lot of sales just off of those. That means that you know, you're getting 2,500 plus searches just on that key term that they're looking for. It. So if he can convert some of those 2,500 looking, then he's going to get some sales. And then you have a bunch of little ones too. And the little ones do matter. They do add up um, to thousands when you're on there. So just consider the little ones do, do make a difference. But you really want to look for the ones that are like 1,000 or over in my opinion. So here's another one, wire wrapping, 1,500. He's ranked number four. 
So to me, he's making most of his sales so far on terms that are, let's see, search volume, wire jewelry making kit, okay? So again, the term, the term wires in there, wire wrapping kit, 2500 So it's not very competitive. So I'm back. Sorry about that. My, uh, uh, my Facebook thing kicked in and it updates automatically. We'll talk about that on another video. But yeah, so you see wire wrapping kit. So we've got this theme of wire, right? It's a lot of wire stuff. Even 721, wire, wire, wire everything. Okay, so wire is one of those key words in there. Wire wrapping, 947, mandrels for jewelry. I don't know what that is. Um, so here we go, 2500, wire wrapping tools, 2000. So he's ranked number six. So he's in the top like six for like four or five key words that have you know, 1500, 2000 plus search volume. That adds up. Um, that gets you sales. And, and those are things you can rank on and compete on. So if I keep going here, Okay, and I do like to see the smaller words. Now, I can just make it easy and just make it top 10 over 1,000, and we're going to do that. But I'm just showing you kind of what my mindset is here. Here's what I'm looking at. So here's a real big one, jewelry. So jewelry we know is really big. It's also extremely saturated. But, th but this search volume, that's not impossible. Um, there's a lot of ASINs in there, as you see. Um, you know, competing products are, are going to be higher. Uh, 34, this is basically telling you... Uh, Here's exactly how they define it. Estimated number of units that you need to be sold over eight days resulting from a search of this keyword. So you need to sell like 34, right? So you could definitely rank on that. That's not impossible. That's actually very doable. And he's in the top 10 for that. So he's probably making some sales off of that. So you've got to find the keywords that you can compete with, that you can make money on. And if he can do it, then if you create something similar a little better, and if you understand your customer, then you can make more sales potentially. Um, so here we go, 2,500 is another, you know, decent word to, to sell on. And he's making, he's in the top 10 there. Here's one here, he's number 10, jewelry making tools. So again, it's jewelry, you're going to have more search volume there, but he's ranked high enough where he's going to make some sales off that. So he's probably making almost all his sales off the ones I just covered. And if you want to make it quick, and I, I did see ring making kit where he's 14, that's a lot of volume. You can rank for that, but, you know, it's going to be more difficult. Um... What I like to look for are terms that are at least 1,500,000 or higher. I ideally want to find maybe four terms in the top five to ten that are at least 2,500, ideally even 4,000. So I know there's enough volume there that I can rank for those keywords, stay ranked there, and make enough sales. So I want to have around a total of maybe anywhere from, with all the small ones, maybe like 14, 15,000. Um, with all the small ones, they add up, right? Like 100, 200, 300, you know, they all add up. So I want to have at least four or five good keywords. They're going to, you know, rank up into 10,000, 12,000 with those four or five keywords at least. So that's going to get me enough volume to be able to make the sale. So it's not all about some random keyword that, you know, you can't compete on. There's a bunch of other, other words that you can potentially compete on. So you have to look at that. Now, then you have to ask yourself, well, is it trending? And I looked up like a ring making kit and some other ones like wire kit. I'm not even sure. So that seems to be pretty good over time. I don't know why they're predicting it's going to drop. But or even like wire jewelry kit. Right? Let's see. And that's nothing too crazy there. But if we kind of find some of these Cerebro terms and we look at them. We can kind of find, you know, wire wrapping kit. Let's check that one out. Probably not going to be crazy. But we want to see, I might look over 90 days, 5 years. We want to see something that's fairly steady or, in fact, trending up. So, like, you know, starts down here and goes up over time. <coughs> I like to look at 90 days. Excuse me. I like to look at, you know, 12 months. I like to look at even 5 years. So... You know, you want to find those main keywords and tr try to find out if it's kind of a trending thing. What I can also tell you is this particular one, if I pull it up on Cerebro, okay, is this item trending? W the keywords that he's ranking for, are his sales going up? Is he doing better or worse? Well, this is just a search volume. It's 19. That's just for that keyword. It's not what you want to look at. You want to look at his sales graph. So if I check out 30, 90, one year, you can clearly see he's going up. He's making more and more sales. And 
he's probably finding the right keywords there, which you just saw in Cerebro, in order to make his sales on. And that's the key. You have to go after the right keywords that you can compete on where you can make those sales. He clearly doesn't have a ton of reviews. He clearly is making a decent amount of sales. So clearly you could break into that if you created something similar or, or better even. Um, another question you want to ask yourself, and we'll get to this in a second. Uh, here's the best way to do that. You can just go 1 to kind of 10, right? Because that's where you're going to make most of your sales. Search volume, we'll just say 1,000 or higher. And then you go, apply filters. Um, so this is where he's going to be making most of his sales at, right here. Okay. So if we combine these up, especially with jewelry making, and he clearly he has that tool for a ring making one, which isn't on here, because I think he's ranked 14th. But there's so much volume on there, he's probably making some sales off that key term as well. But jewelry making tools, so the jewelry ones are at the bottom, they're also very high. But he's also in the top 10, so he's probably making a good chunk of sales off of there, because he does have the ring maker in there. And then a lot of the wire ones are like mediocre, but that combines for four or five, six, seven, seven, eight thousand of, of search term. That's not bad. Um, this is enough to make a product be able to sell 20 a day. And, you know, the more you work on it, the more you sponsor yourself on those key terms. You see how he's number two here for 6,000, number four sponsored for this. You know, that's going to get him a decent amount of sales. You can see he sponsored himself on, on these key terms, too. This one, he's just organically ranked, and he's getting some free stuff on wire wrapping. So that's what I try to look for. I try to look for hopefully something even better than this. The search volume isn't amazing on this, but it's not bad. And if you can get yourself ranked on enough keywords to get you 15,000, 20,000 search volume, or hopefully more, because, again, we're not including all the little small searches that add up, you know, you could easily get yourself 30,000, 40,000 searches a month on your product, maybe even 50,000, and then you're making some sales, right? Um, if you have a good product, you have the right price, and you have the right quality. So you have to think about that. It's not all about the keyword and what you're looking at. Clearly, that wasn't the key term. I'm not sure that there is a key term here because jewelry tools, you're going to get a lot of different stuff that might not include the ring maker or the ring sizer, I should say, or the wires. There might be something completely different. So there's a lot of general terms here, but clearly wires related to what he's selling because he has the wires in there. So jewelry making tools, I mean, you could. there's all kinds of different jewelry making stuff. I mean, are wires a necessity? Maybe, but not necessarily. You know, you could, you could just have beads in a string, right? So that could be jewelry making, and you could have a tool with that. So you got to think about what phrases are they ranking for. If they have low reviews, how are they making their sales? And here we go. We have our answer. Here's where most of their sales are coming from. So we've kind of qualified that, and it truly doesn't look like a bad product. Um, the question is, can we improve on this? Can we make it a little better? He already has the ring sizer. He has the measurements. He has all the little tools. Can you make it better? Um, what does this customer want? Maybe look up a YouTube video of somebody making jewelry with this. Find out what they want. Maybe they want some different colors in here. Maybe you know he has some different color wire. Uh, find out what people are making, right? And find out what you could maybe add to this to make it better. You have to know your customer. So just because we found this, you could copy this exactly. You could go after the same keywords. And if you could beat them in price or match them, you might be able to make some sales. But that's not the best idea because he's already got some established uh, market, only 100 some, so it's, it's really nothing. Even if he had a couple hundred, 300, you could still compete with them. The question is, are you going to offer more or something that's more intriguing for less? Um, you've got to change or add or adapt something. You've got to solve some kind of problem or add something that's going to entice people to purchase yours over theirs. Now, the other question you want to ask yourself, is this a good product? Now, would I personally do this product? I would consider it, but here's what I would say. Are most of these sellers, and I understand this isn't the key word, the main key word, but are most of the sellers selling this stuff, are they American or are they Chinese? And the reason I, I want to know the answer to that is because I don't want to compete against a bunch of Chinese sellers that can undersell me because if it comes down to price, you're going to lose. And... That's true of anything. If you're just focused on price, you're never going to be able to beat a Chinese factory in price. You're going to have to do it through better advertising. You're going to have to do it through smart advertising. You're going to also have to do it through creating maybe a video and a better listing. You're going to have to do it through enhanced brand content and A-plus content. If you don't know what that means, you need to find out and look it up because that can increase your sales up to 30%. And 
That's how you beat Chinese factories. You have to offer something that's going to entice people to buy more. Now, could you differentiate this enough? I don't know. Like this one here, and this obviously has a ton. He's ranking for different keywords, but you see he has the different colors. He offers pretty much the same stuff the other guy does. He doesn't have the ring sizer, but it looks like he has a good assortment of stuff. The listing's not too bad. You know, so the reality of it is you have to kind of think, am I going to be able to compete? Am I going to have to be able to compete with the same keywords that this other guy is competing? And, and I think he can. But the question is, again, are most of these Chinese? So let's check this guy out. If I click on sold by right here, okay, it's going to tell me if he's a Chinese seller. And yes, he is. He's a Chinese seller. So he probably gets a really great price, and he's probably making a decent margin. If he needed to lower his price, he probably wouldn't, probably can. Now let's click on this guy. He's obviously a huge seller. Looks to me like he's a Chinese seller just by the name, and he is. So we're two for two so far. Um, if you look through these and you kind of click on each one, and I've already kind of done it on some of them, most, that was the same guy, most of these are unfortunately Chinese sellers. And why does that matter again? It comes down to pricing. It comes down to you can never compete with a Chinese factory in pricing. You're just not going to win that war. Um, so you've got to consider that as part of your qualification. So this guy, I should say woman, it could be a woman, who knows? It could, it could be a group, it doesn't matter. But to me it looks like, yeah, again, Chinese. And of course, yes it is. So if I were going to recommend this product, I don't know that I could because, yes, there you could compete. Yes, you could. If you came up with a good idea and you added some extra stuff that somebody else doesn't have, you absolutely could compete enough on those keywords we looked up because that 138 ratings was able to do it and sell 20 a day. So you could do it too. But you're competing with a lot of Chinese sellers, all Chinese sellers from what I've seen, and I've checked a few others when I wasn't on the video. Um, so you're, you're competing against, they, they can outprice you. You want to find one where there's more um, U.S. or uh, sellers that are not Chinese sellers because they're going to be able to beat you on price. It's going to be very difficult to keep up with that. That's a very important factor. You want to have enough search volume in there to know that you can make sales and compete on those keywords. And you want to have something a little different, unless you're one of the first to the market, that's going to entice people to buy yours over theirs because it can't be price. If it's a price, you're going to lose. If it's something that you've added or made it better, you're going to win. And that's easy to say and, and not necessarily easy to do. In this case, I have trouble understanding how I can make it better because I don't understand the market well enough. And that goes back to what I talked about. You have to go and understand your customers. So if I was going to launch this product, what I would do is I would go on YouTube. I would look up some people that do this maybe some influencers, I would figure out what it is they do and what they use and what their favorite tools are and I would find out how people are making jewelry with this and kind of, you know, what their experience is with these kits. <coughs> Excuse me. So once I understood that better, if I could add something as a bonus, bundle something else or add different colors or add different options that they might not have in their current kits, maybe better storage. I mean, there's a lot of things to look at there. Um, then I would consider launching it. But as it stands, because it's high uh, market for Chinese sellers or probably factories, I don't know the market well enough, nor do I want to get involved in looking it up more. Um, I would not p personally go after this. However, I'm very confident that you can compete here uh, with the right keywords. Not necessarily Joy Wire Kit at 19 search volume, but the ones we looked up and ones we talked about. And maybe even Ring Making Kit, if you could add some different options. So that's kind of what I'm looking for in a product. Um, don't be scared of high, of, of high ratings. <coughs> find one. If you can find one or even better, if you can find two or three competing in this market you find, that's great because that means that you can likely compete too if, you can, if there's enough search volume, right? So if you have a couple hundred thousand search volume, like a Ving diagram, right? And you can kind of fit in your little niche here and figure out what you can do a little better. Um, and you can go after those keywords that aren't getting pummeled with and they're, they're decent search volume, then you can compete. Um, if you go after a huge market, that's fine. It doesn't matter if there's a ton of ton of ratings in there. you got to find the guys that are able to compete and how they're competing and figure out how they're doing it, what keywords they're bidding on, and do they have something different. Um so that's what you look for. It's not about the ratings, but it is about the ratings as well. What I mean by that, of course, is find the low ratings within the, the market. 
if it's a very, let's say it's not a huge, uh, a hugely developed market, and there's not a ton of search volume, but there's like mediocre search volume in there, maybe medium sized search volume or even low search volume, but there's only a two or three sellers there. Well, then you got to ask yourself, can I compete? Because a lot of times the niches that were too small before, they've grown to the point now where they're big enough to be a full market in themselves. Because Amazon is such a behemoth, right? So you might find something that was kind of just maybe two years ago or even a year ago was just such a small market, you know, you could maybe be the only seller there but maybe sell a few a day. Maybe that market now has grown where people are doing 10, 15 a day, but there's only maybe four or five sellers there, but they're all getting a little piece, maybe 10, 15, 20 a day. Then you can potentially compete. So the, the big things you want to look for, aside from everything we talked about, is you want to make sure that that market, the size matches up with how many sellers that have, <coughs> excuse me, I have a really bad cough. You want to match up with those sellers that maybe have one to 300 reviews um, and that are competing well within that market. If you find yourself seeing 20 sellers and they're only making one or two sales and the volume is like low to medium, you probably don't want to consider that. But if it's a massive volume, and this would be like one of the categories that are currently selling, it's massive. You're talking some of the key words, 20, 30,000, 40,000. I'm able to compete. Now, it's saturated if you were to look at it as a novice, but if you look and in, read in between the lines, like I'm trying to tell you, you'll see ones with low reviews, and you're like, wow, they're making 20, 30 sales a day. How are they doing it? Pull up Cerebro, go look at the words that they're, qualify, they're, they're, that they're bidding on and they're ranking for, and then you're going to find out where they're getting their sales. And then you ask yourself, can I compete with those keywords? Can I create something a little better or different where I can compete there? And that's truly how you qualify a product in my mind. Um, so yeah, ratings do matter, but not for the overall. You don't need a whole market to have low ratings. You just need to find enough sellers that are able to compete in certain keywords that are able to do it successfully and get 20 sales a day plus. So I hope that helps. I hope that really gives you guys an insight of how I look for products. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, man, I've been running myself rampant with uh, taxes, trying to get all that stuff done, so it's really taking a toll on me. But if you guys have any questions, or if you, I, I really love it if you liked and subscribed, if you find this useful, uh, please go ahead and do that if you haven't. It really helps me out, helps the algorithm, helps me grow. Uh, please email me at fbacommute at gmail.com if you have any questions. Next video I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about my different streams of income. I'm talking about eBay, Facebook, dropshipping, and Amazon. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. Have a great night and God bless. Thank you.